So I'm about to introduce you to a car that I've been trying to get my hands on for what, what must have been the best part of 10 years. Not necessarily this particular model, although that is part of it, but this precise car. And uh, well, I finally managed to do it. Got my hands on it at long last. And well, <laughs> it's majestic. I mean, majestically bad, but majestic. <laughs> it just fills me with so much joy every time I look at it. Oh God, I love it so much. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a 1993 Mercedes-Benz 220 CE. It's part of the W124 family. It's technically a C124, but you'll hear me say C124 and W124 interchangeably in these videos. And it is, very broken <laughs> i mean what would you expect it's a car on my channel it was never going to be delightfully fantastically working was it i haven't really looked at this car i'm kind of seeing a lot of this for the first time i was here when they unloaded it off of the trailer but i've not really had a, a proper look at it so let's have a let's have a poke around it so i think the first thing that is noticeable is the colour. I don't know what the actual technical name for this colour is, but I think it could probably probably be best described as gangster pink, although it is definitely some kind of red. And obviously being red means that it is actually quite faded. I suppose it's quite hard to pick this up on camera, but if we just look over, I mean, the paint is rough. It's really rough to touch. But, you know, and it's, it's actually quite pitted all over the place. I mean, just here on the bonnet at least. That is, uh, it's, it's dull. It's dull paint. It needs, at bare minimum, a polish. And I think what it really needs actually is a respray. Let's have a look around. So 1993. And uh, I love these cars. I've always wanted one of these. I love all of these uh, you know, 80s, 90s Mercs. So, you know, the 190E, this is the W124. So this was this was what became what we now know as the E-Class. Like I said, 220E this is. So it's got a 2.2 litre inline four cylinder petrol engine. And it's also got a four speed automatic box. And I think this engine, when new, <laughs> important to say when new, put out 150 brake horsepower. It's probably doing about zero right now, but we'll get into some of that in a minute. So, yeah, I mean, if you come back to the paint, I mean, that is rough, real rough. I mean, not only is it actually dirty, but it is rough as hell. You can see in the headlight there, there's obviously some kind of seal that's gone bad because there's a lot of condensation in there. The Mercedes badge, the, you know, the crosshairs that point out of there has been stolen. It hasn't been put in somewhere uh, for safekeeping. It was actually stolen. This car has been living for the last couple of years in central London, in Westminster, which is where I got it from. So yeah, that just got robbed immediately by some complete scumbag, but is what it is. So come down to the front bumper, there's just a patch of something. That's, I don't know what that is, is something spilled on it or come away? You know, we've got some dodgy plastic down there. It's a bit of grill, has definitely seen better days. More blemish here on, on the bonnet. It's just covered in bird muck. These wheels now, I'm not a wheel person, so I don't really know who these wheels are by, if they're by anyone of note. I mean, I know that this style of wheel has traditionally been a BBS wheel. Whether these are actually BBS or they're just cheap knockoffs of BBS, I don't know, but if you're a wheel person, let me know in the comments. But you can just see in here, that is, that is in such, such awful condition. I mean, the pitting on there, even if these are BBS wheels, I mean, they're so far gone. You have to look at it and think, is that even worth saving? I mean, they've been curbed beyond belief there. And yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not amazing. And all four look exactly the same, just, just terrible. So one of the things as well, just coming back this way a bit, that the uh, W124s were famous for is you'll notice that the door mirrors are different 
and no one is actually 100% sure why they did it. The driver's side <laughs> is rectangular and the passenger side is square. So, and, and you find on the left-hand drive models, that's, that's flipped reverse, that's around on the other way. So yeah, no, no one's quite sure why they actually did that, but hey-ho. So coming around this side, you know, we've got some bad lacquer peel in there, if you can see that. I mean, you know, my experience with lacquer peel isn't the most amazing, but I mean, this car just needs a wash as well. Look, there's just stuff growing in it. There's mold everywhere. I don't know when the last time this thing was washed, but one thing I will say though is, even when you come down here, when you come around these wheel arches, they are absolutely solid. There's no rust whatsoever. These Mercs were known for being very resistant to corrosion, which is just kind of, you know, unheard of on a car this age, especially in a country like this where we have loads of moisture, loads of rain. Moving down here, there's just more bird poo. The roof, never, yeah, I mean, the roof's all right. It's similar faded like the rest of the car. Down here on this rear arch, there is actually a little bit of bubble in there. And so I kind of take it back what I just said. You're gonna have to sue me, I'm sorry I lied. So a little bit of rust there, but that's just kind of like surface rust. That's nothing, nothing bad at all. And you can see down there, there's no deep rust that's on the uh, on the seal under there. That all looks good like inside the wheel well. Again, the wheel is completely trashed. The tiny little bit of bubble in there, but I mean tiny. Oh, actually, and there. But I'll be honest with you, I've seen worse on a Mark V Golf, so I'm not too bothered about that right now. So I actually bought this car off of one of my very good friends. And uh, he said to me that he'd been offered 450 pounds scrap because he was just about to scrap it because it's a non-runner uh, so i offered him 500 quid and i'd come and pick it up and uh we did a deal so i picked this up for 500 pounds should we take a look inside so old school key only got the one and the first thing that you can smell is just real old stuffy <laughs> leather it's uh it's in remarkably good condition in here like remarkably good condition so it's got a full leather interior and well i mean that looks like to me the only bit of wear in this car so the leather's really nice it's very it's very supple and we've got the uh lovely wood trim that featured in all of these cars actually i've just noticed we're missing we're missing a bit of surround there so we're missing that on the other side but oh god i'll tell you what i love absolutely love the, the design of these old german cars like this i just think they're so classy and they're so well put together like you know everything is still absolutely rock solid in here apart from that but you know everything else is apart from this too i just completely lied but for a car that is i think what is this 29 years old you know it's done incredibly incredibly well i love it so much <laughs> i love this car so much so like i said i've been trying to buy this particular car now for the best part of 10 years and that's because it's been owned by a succession of my friends so one of my best mates bought it uh, about 10 years ago he sold it to another good friend who then sold it to another good friend and every time it was sold I missed out on it I just didn't you know the situation the circumstances just weren't quite right to get a hold of this car but now I finally have my hands on it and even though it's been owned by three mates up until now I don't know anything about this car I literally I just, there's there's no there's no history for it really there's no service history I've got there's, the, there's MOT history that you can get online but i don't really know what's been spent on it I'd, i haven't spoken to any of them about this car i've got no paperwork i've got no nothing so i mean actually i'll tell you what we can do right now we can do a uh, hpi history check on it take a little dive into it and basically see if any of my mates have either been screwed over or screwed me in the process excuse the the funky camera angle <laughs> <laughs> but in order to actually work out if my mates have been stiffed or if they've in turn tried to stiff me on this car I'm going to do a check and I'm going to use car vertical for this you might have seen these guys 
all over YouTube, all, all over the internet. They provide a great service. And actually, I have reached out to those guys and they've been very kind uh, and have allowed me to offer all of you lovely people a 10% discount on a car vertical check. All you have to do to redeem that is you'll find in the description below this video, there is a link that you can use. Use that link and then your 10% discount should get like automatically added. All right, so let's stick the reg in. Check vehicle, check in. Please wait, collecting available data. Okay, your report is ready, view report. Right at the very top, mileage. No mileage fraud was disclosed by the report. Great, this vehicle is not wanted as stolen. There's no data about this vehicle being damaged. And there's no outstanding finance on this car. I mean, I'd be really quite concerned if there was outstanding finance on a 500 pound car that's 29 years old. <laughs> But I suppose never say never, right? Did you know that reports are additionally spot checked via data scientists? So spotted activity was manufactured 1993, registered in the United Kingdom in March 1993. So that makes this a Gen 2 car. They did Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 of these W124 family cars, and uh, it wasn't actually that far. I think it was. It must. I think it was only about. September of 1993 if my memory recalls is when they went to the Gen 3 and that's actually when they went from calling these cars such as this one this is the 220 CE when Gen 3 came around that's when it became E220 and it gave that name structure that we all know now you know the E class the C class but this was just before that change was brought in so this is a Gen 2 car so it's had the license plate change at some point from the reg that's on it to a what looks like a private plate at some point that was what back in 93 so that's probably the original owner wasn't it we jumped ahead now to 2006 it failed an inspection so it failed an mot the near side front tire had a lump so another mot test there and then rc and then the mot test was rectified and then in 2007 uh condit <laughs> in 2007 right there was an mot test and uh, it looks like it failed, or it had an advisory at least, because there was condensation in the offside headlamp. Now you just saw me a minute ago, it's condensation now on the driver's side headlamp. So this was a problem uh, in 2007. So, so this car does actually have a current MOT and it runs until October, I think. So that's why it's here parked out on the street like this, because it's actually road legal. It's, it's had quite a lot of fails. Wow, 2020. So my friend did say to me in the last couple of years, he's spent a lot of money on this car only to then end up trying to give it away for scrap. And well, I mean, you can see here that that's quite the list of things to fail your MOT on. Uh, and again, <laughs> anyway, right. They've performed all these checks in United Kingdom, US, Poland, France, Canada, Germany, Italy, Spain, Austria, Romania, Czech Republic, Netherlands, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Hungary, Belgium, Slovakia, blah, 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 lots of countries. Right, fantastic then. So yeah, again, shout out to car vertical for being able to offer that discount to all you lovely viewers again there'll be a link in the description below in this video where you can claim your 10 percent discount on a check just like that for your car so take advantage of that i would okay so the actual mileage on this car is 185,624, which it is high right that's a <laughs> this is a high mileage car but the thing about mercedes of this era these mercedes were built in the time where it was the engineers that controlled mercedes rather than the marketing guys so these things are built like tanks there are many examples i think of these cars acting as taxis the saloon versions in germany where they hit you know close to a million miles there's been quite a few examples hitting a million miles and these things are just robust i mean maybe not this one so much because it is actually dead <laughs> but yeah this interior i mean the back in there look at that it looks absolutely immaculate I don't, it looks like no one's ever really been sitting in the back all the floor mats i mean i imagine these are third party floor mats or two floor mats okay two floor mats you know it's lovely in here anything in here oh hello what have we got here then locking wheel nuts by the looks of it we've got ah Mercedes-Benz thingamajigger. Maybe that's what goes on the front. Maybe it doesn't have one of the stars that point out. Maybe it's that, is it? I don't know, I'm not sure where else this could go, to be honest with you, but I think put that back in there. 
and then uh, we've got an uh, interior light bulb from Halfords. So, oh, hello, I just noticed this. It looks like this mirror might have been <laughs> non-expertly glued in at some point, so that's great, but. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a peek under the bonnet. Oh, actually, look, that's what that thing could have been. It looks like it might be a replacement for that. So, here she is. So this, like I said, this is the 2.2 litre inline four cylinder. So it's not one of the lovely six cylinders that Mercedes used to produce. This is a four cylinder at about 150 brake when new. And yeah, I mean, it's all there. <laughs> it all looks in fairly goodish kind of nick i suppose i mean this is the first time I'm, I'm i'm seeing this properly with you guys so i'm looking down here at these belts and i mean that belt needs replacing i can tell that straight away because that is uh it's pretty cracked and and minging down there to be honest with you so i can't see any leaks or anything like that straight off the bat so that's okay the hose is all connected all We've got a load of fluid. So, you know, like I said, this car has got a current MOT, even though it's a non-runner, it does have a current MOT. And so the only thing I've done to this car since having it is I have put a brand new battery in because I'm, I was told that the battery is beyond repairing. So I already bought one of these and I've uh, obviously employed anti-theft, more anti-theft than it already needs because it doesn't run. But We'll connect this up in a second and then uh, I think the only thing to do really is to try and start her. So look, we got, have we got oil? Yep, load of oil, just spilling it everywhere. That's absolutely fine. I just need to, how do you put the chair back then? Oh, is that as far back as it goes? How do you put it down then? I feel like I'm up high. <laughs> no, I don't know, I'll have to work that out in a minute. Right, so here's what I know about this car. I've heard me say a couple of times now, it's a non-runner. In the sense that it apparently starts, I haven't tried starting it yet, but this car does start, but it cuts out. I don't know how quickly it cuts out. I don't know if you can drive it for a mile and then it cuts out or it just cuts out immediately. So that's all I'm going on. The only, and the only thing that I've been told is from, from my mate who owned this last is that he got towed home by the RAC in this car. And they told him that it's either something to do with the air intake or, uh, you know, an, a math sensor or something like that, or the distributor. And the reason I don't have much faith in that report by the RAC is simply because these engines on this Gen 2 220 don't have <laughs> a distributor to my knowledge. I have I have looked into it and these cars uh, had an electronic ignition. They don't have a distributor. So that either means that the diagnosis is way off or it might be something to do with the intake. So I think there's nothing for it really, but to give it a little go. Okay, so the key is on the left hand side, which is gonna just confuse me constantly all the time anything I can't turn it why won't it turn on okay okay we have electricity there's all manner of noises something's happening in the engine bay if that's the fuel pump then it's stuck on but let's just try and start it now see what happens oh it starts Oh, fantastic. No, it's not happy. It's rough. That is very rough. The revs are just going up by themselves. <laughs> okay, we're idling close to 2000 and it's just dropped. Now we're at about 1200 RPM. And so it starts. So, well, that's good. Right, so there's no funky noises, I can't see any leaks. There's nothing underneath. And so all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna let this idle and then just see if it cuts out. Uh, and then basically just, I think we have to just take it from there. But yeah, it sounds smooth as hell. 
So this is all quite old school in here, it's all quite retro, so that's the air box. You'll know what I'm learning about all of this stuff as well, so it's got an old school cable throttle. And there it goes, it just cut out straight away and there's some kind of noise up here. No, where's that coming from? I can feel it vibrating. Okay, there's something going on in here. Is it in there? Is it in the throttle body? Maybe it is an intake problem then. Yeah, that feels as though something through here is vibrating. Can you hear that? Okay, where's that coming from? I mean, this car was like that was on for about, quite couldn't have been a minute. Oh, what's happening now? Oh my God, all sorts of noises. Something in here clicking. Something in there is clicking like mad. Sounds like a relay. What's going on? Right, let's turn the key off just in case I burn this thing to the ground. <laughs> right, so that kind of went a little bit better than I thought it would. Kind of, I suppose. I don't know, but maybe that RAC diagnosis is correct because it sounded like there was some vibration coming from the uh, the throttle body just then. You could hear it was buzzing. Uh, and there was a relay up here by the battery that was just clicking on and off, just tick, 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 like that. So I'm just gonna try starting the car again and uh, see what happens. Well, that's not good, is it? It just kind of fired and then it turned itself off. Let's try again. Give it a bit of throttle. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> okay, it's off again. So here's my personal individual problem with this project and that is if you've seen any of my previous videos now you've seen me put a new engine in a fiat 500 put a new engine in a mini cooper s you know i've, I've refreshed the suspension i've done a lot of mechanical work on the project cars that i've had up until this point what i haven't really done is any kind of strict mechanicness if you know what i mean i've not done any like diagnosing none of those cars came to me with problems that needed diagnosing by myself you know they came to me and I, I already knew what the issues were going to be um and so I, I was able to act from there now i'm absolutely determined not to call a mechanic out for this because this is where you know a lot of the skill comes in with a, with a mechanic is kind of actually doing the troubleshooting and working stuff out so this is what i'm going to aim at with this car um it would help if i had some kind of like documentation, I can't even call my, my mate, he's, in, he's currently on holiday in Spain. So I, I think the last thing I want to do is <laughs> bell him up and bug him. So, uh, we haven't even checked the boot actually. Yeah, should we just check the boot while I think of where to go from here? <laughs> All right, oh, so old school, I love it so much. Oh, hello. Well, I wasn't expecting that. What have we got here? Is that a replacement grill? No, that's not for this car, is it? Is that for this? It's all blacked out everything. Is that that? I think that could be a new modified replacement for that, maybe? I don't know, but we'll keep hold of that. You can go there, thank you. Look at this. We have got ourselves a car cover. Is it rainproof? Is it waterproof? It's, it's uh, entirely in German, so any German speakers out there, it's never been opened, lads. It's made in China, though. Let's pretend that never happened. Uh, is this waterproof? It looks like it's cold proof and it looks like it's heat proof, so sweet. Happy about that. What we got here? We've got some four black screws. Maybe they're for this, are they? Who knows? Stanley blade you know, just in case. 
got ourselves a delightful air conditioning system. So we can clip that onto somewhere. Maybe let's clip it onto there now, look, and I can have that blow in my face. Plug that into a cigarette lighter. Is there one in the boot? Doesn't look like there's one in the boot, so I'll have to just leave that there for now. We've got this thing, which looks like one of those like emergency preparation set kit things that I can't believe I've only just looked in the boot. This is fantastic. Oh my God. This is worth the 500 quid that I paid for this car. There's a heavy duty rubber torch, jump leads, <gasps> gloves, first aid kit, a triangle, got a high vis jacket. Oh, I mean, really, I should have the high vis jacket on now, shouldn't I? Because this is, uh, this is dangerous what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. If I just dig through here, there's this thing, which looks like the most sophisticated ice scraper I have ever seen. Also comes with a shoe cleaning brush, so that's quite cool. Ugh, screen, concentrated screen wash brand new, never opened, another ice scraper, a whole bottle of Castrol 10W40, antifreeze and coolant, jeez, another high-vis jacket. I mean, it's here, so I probably, probably should, shouldn't I? If anyone's watching, they're gonna think I've gone truly nuts. Or they're just discovering that I'm truly nuts, one of the two. There's some other stuff down there, there's, metal things oh they're cool what are they for cleaning out that horrendous filth in there probably probably not okay oh. Oh. we have got some paperwork and we've also got the head unit for the radio let's have a look in here then so that's the green keeper slip i'm not going to show you that so we've got oh a touch-up stick set Mercedes-Benz OEM official, what's the colour code then? 3512 Alm, Almondrot Met Al, Alman, Almandinrot Met, is that German though? Metallic, but yeah, if anyone knows what that is, put it in the comments below. That's the, uh, that could come in handy, I suppose. What have we got here then? Empty bag. Empty box, head unit is Panasonic. Yes, Belgravia garage, right, hold on, there's, there are addresses on this, so. I'm just gonna have to read this off camera a second. So this was, this is in my mate's name. So carry out repair to electric window switch, strip down wire in repair in a bulkhead, replace damage comfort module. Da -da 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 -da. That's a 354 quid bill <laughs> to fix the electric window. You must have been mental, mate. What have we got here? Let's have a look, another load of things. Okay, so this is a, this is quite telling. This is a, uh, this is a repair invoice. So the garage here, they've carried out an MOT, carried out an interim service. The non-start, non-start traced fault to ABS over voltage protection relay. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Because I just said a minute ago when I was trying to start this that there was a relay that was clicking on and off like crazy just then when it all cut out. So it's, uh, it doesn't say that they replaced that relay. It just said they've traced the fault to that relay. They've replaced the battery. <laughs> I've just replaced it again, so fantastic. Near side rear coil spring replaced, offside front suspension arm replaced, replaced broken crankshaft sensor. It says here in brackets that the RAC broke. <laughs> so an OEM Mercedes part, six litres of fuel. Da -da 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 -da. Oh no, they did replace the protection relay at a cost of £150. That seems excessive. Well, they replaced the crankshaft sensor at £300. The labour on a diagnostic test was £200. My word, no wonder he was going to scrap this car. How... Oh my god, he paid 1500 quid for all of these repairs. Chris, mate, you paid 1500 quid. That is... Wow. Wishbone, parts and labour, 350 quid. Coil spring, 184 quid. 
service 140 quid battery 135 quid <laughs> i put that new battery in there that's in there right now for 53 quid from uh, gsf car parts oh i've just noticed that this kit has got a light bulb kit in it fantastic all right what else have we got in here well there's quite a lot of paperwork actually anything of note we have got wipers valio there's actually a wiper in it We've got two wipers this car only has one wiper i don't know if you've ever seen this on these cars where they've just got this really elaborate one wiper system where it just it, it shoots up and it goes extends mechanically up and then comes back down and it's fantastic when i get the car working i'll have to show you it these old school retro mercs oh <gasps> no way oh that's it we're in business boys they've got the haynes manual for this car i'm seeing there's no 220 but we'll uh, we'll just pretend that 220 is actually included in this oh yes oh yeah oh, that's it we'll have the car fixed in about a day another ice scraper <gasps> no way a battery charger oh my god i've made my money but i just sell all these bits on ebay and i've made my money back a noco genius wicked smart charger that's actually pretty cool <laughs> i could really do with one of them what have we got here oh <gasps> no way is this the original is this the original book it's the original owner's manual i don't believe it this is great another ice scraper or maybe that was the same one that i just dropped back down there and a lovely piece of plastic that goes somewhere on this car i'll have to deal with this later so i've just done a little bit of research and it turns out that that over voltage protection relay that we just saw on that garage report is more than likely the relay that we heard clicking in here i think it sits behind this panel if you can get in there so what's in there the ecu so the relay's in there somewhere and what i've been able to learn just in the last 10 minutes from reading a few forum posts is that that relay the symptoms is just they're all sorts of stuff rough idling trouble starting um you know funny noises coming from the inside of the engine just all manner of things so i'm wondering now if that relay has gone bad again i don't know maybe they replaced it with just a dodgy knockoff item or I, I, I don't know but it sounds like that was what was clicking like crazy a minute ago when we tried to start this engine and so instantly i'm just thinking now maybe the thing to do is to just start there just start there again maybe just replace that one more time maybe they, they got it wrong or something because it just seems like the answer to so many w124 problems is just replacing that straight away so i don't think i'm going to go completely crazy you know testing for spark testing for fuel testing you know the throttle bodies and that if it's just going to be that relay again so what i've done actually is i've already gone and ordered a new one now i did just diss that one being like a cheap knockoff um but i have just gone and bought what looks like a chinese knockoff again <laughs> just to see what that does it's 60 pounds that part and um, that should be coming hopefully tomorrow so i think i'm going to start there i don't think i'm even going to pull this apart you know and, and go into the proper diagnosis yet until i've just got that relay and uh, if that's all this turns out to be that that relay has gone bad again this could be an absolute steal so let's talk about what my plans are for this car so i have absolutely no intention of selling this car hopefully ever i would like to keep hold of this car for the rest of my days um like i said to you, i've been trying to get hold of this particular car for 10 years now and uh, now i finally got it i finally got there uh, i don't want to let it slip out of my control so you know this was very much a mid-range merc this isn't one of the special models it's not a six cylinder you know it's not an e300 or anything like that you know those things go for a lot better money this car isn't really worth much money at all but it's kind of worth it to me you know and i've chat 
I've chatted to my mates and you know we're all very happy that it's like staying in the family and that we're not going to have to scrap it for one if that's what the problem seems to be yeah but we're not going to have to sell it to anyone else like and I very much plan on using this car as my daily driver I absolutely love 90s cars 80s cars more retro cars and you might have seen that I put out a poll about this as well a little while ago about what your favorite types of cars are and i think this is going to be the direction that this channel is probably going to start heading in more retro cars it was probably going to be more 90s cars because right now they're the easiest for me to get hold of you know a lot of 80s cars are gone right up there in price but there's a good supply of 90s cars i mean this being a prime example 500 pounds but this is going to be the sort of car now where i keep and my my goal is actually to fully fully restore this car you will see this car on the channel a lot but this restoration of this car is going to take year two years because i want to keep it on the road as well i'm not going to strip this down you know to bare metal anytime soon because you've seen my facilities i just deal with i've just got one parking space i don't have a garage or anything but i want to keep this as my daily driver so there's going to be a lot of people watching this video thinking this car is not economically viable and my response to that is that's the whole point <laughs> this car is not supposed this is not one of those kind of cars that is supposed to be economically viable anyone who has a project car will tell you their project car is not economically viable and that's not the point in this you know it's not and it's not the top of the range car like i said but i'm gonna pour my heart and soul into making sure that this car runs the way it should and hopefully we can get another and hopefully we can get another 185,000 miles out of it. Uh, and I really do plan to drive this as a daily. I can't see why not. It's an absolutely fantastic car, as long as I can get it running. So I've ordered that part. I mean, the car's parked out here now. I can't move this car into its regular spot where you see me doing anything because, as you see, it doesn't run. So I'm going to have to do a lot of this work out on the street. Now I'm hoping if it's just that relay and the car starts up and we can, we can drive it around there, then you know that's going to be great news and i'll be able to perform you know a service on it and we can start tearing a few things apart and uh having a look at it and cleaning some stuff out in that but yeah like i am i'm really excited for this car and this is going to be a real fun one to do and i'm hoping i'm hoping that with these slightly older cars they are a little bit easier to work on now they're certainly less complex but they are going to be harder to work on if you think about things like seized bolts and you know seized dodgy bushings and blah, 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 all of these kind of things but i'm hoping on the whole it's going to be quite it's going to be a good one to get into and so if you want to keep up with the progress on this car you're going to have to hit subscribe i'd very much appreciate it if you did hit subscribe it means the world to me it really does help and, you know it also it actually helps you out as well because it means i can go to more companies like car vertical and get them to give you discounts when they see that basically there's enough subscribers like that's how this game works so help me out to help you out by hitting subscribe <laughs> and we'll get that relay fitted and see if that helps anything just straight off the bat but that's not going to be now that is going to be in the next one which is where i'll see you next oh my god he's, he's actually left money in here he must be absolutely mental <laughs> oh god i can't wait to get this on the road it's so cool look how retro that is it's just it's simple there's, there's nothing there's no extras there's nothing it doesn't need to be there's no nothing beeping at you there's no silly hill start you know what i mean there's just there's no seat belt stuff beeping at you it's not this thing isn't showing you all sorts of different lights in here now and it's just it's just what you need it's refreshing it's delightful they had the answers back in the day